I often say this, folks. God has given me so much to do, and I'm so far behind, I'm going to live forever. <laughs> but this morning, I got up and the Lord began to deal with me. I had something else prepared. And I made a few slides just to keep me on track. But do you know healing is the children's bread? And we have been through a difficult time. And I think the first thing I would like to see is God heal us from the wounds we've received throughout this last few, well, probably since January. In Isaiah 53 and 5, we read it this morning in the communion, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Often we apply that only to the personal, not to the corporate body. But this morning, I want to apply it to the corporate body. I want to see God heal the wounds of the corporate. Because you see, we're called to be a body of Christ. We hardly ever talk about the parallels. By the way, the Thursday nights, I was going to wait and go on the Thursday nights, but we'll start this Thursday night. We're going to start with this, spiritual parallels to the natural body. And we're going to begin to find our place as individuals, but as a corporate in the body of Christ. Because there is a corporate place for CMC in the body of Christ in Jacksonville. And God wants us to come into that. But if we don't know what it looks like, how can we walk into it? How can we receive it? How can we step into what God is calling us to do and live to our full potential? Folks, you have not reached your full potential. I don't care how old you are. I not sure I'm not the oldest, but I'm getting there. <laughs> in 1 Peter 2 and 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. There's a promise of God. Psalm 103, verse 3, who forgiveth all our iniquity, who healeth, how many? All. How many know that there are corporate bodies that have diseases? And I like to put an, a dash between the, in the, the word disease, D-I-S dash E-A-S E-S. Yeah. Are there places where you're not at ease? Are you diseased? I know it's a play on words, but I'm a Canadian. You're going to have to put up with it. <laughs> because we need to come to a place and get God to bring us to a place and do work in us where we are at ease with those God's called us to be with. Where it's family, not friends. Let me say that again. Where we're family and not friends. I'm not saying we won't be friends. I'm just saying that there's a family connection that God, it says what God has joined together, let no man part us under. <laughs> and man's been trying to divide the body of Christ for ages. I'm declaring we're coming to the time when God's going to shake us together. Not shake us apart shake us together and when he shakes us together that means we can get more in you know I go back to the days when grandma used to bake and you had the old sifter and all those things and she'd take and shake the flour in the cup so you got a full measure God wants to get a full measure out of you that's why he's shaking you not to shake you apart not to shake things off but to shake you together so he can get more into you. <coughs> he wants to deal with my diseases. 
Psalm 147, verse 3, he healeth the broken in heart. Now, I know that seems simple, but folks, have we looked at where our hearts are broken? In our situation that we've just been through, there's been some breaking of hearts, breaking of relationships. God says, I want to heal your broken heart. CMC, I want to heal your broken heart. I want to take what the enemy meant for evil and make it for good. I want to take what he's accusing you of and bring you into a place where I am affirming you. Lord, heal our broken heart. And he bindeth up the... Wait a minute. If I'm healed, why do I need my wounds bound up? They're two different operations. And there's some times when God has to bind the wound up. Like Cindy's arm. <laughs> he binds up. Why? Because the conditions for healing must be right. I go back to the days when we used to put a splint on something, not just a a blow-up boot and all that stuff. And those are good. But the splint immobilizes it while it heals. There are some places where God wants to immobilize you until you heal. Oh, no, Lord. Just heal me. Give me a miracle. <laughs> right? Yeah. And we so, we so focus on signs, wonders, and miracles that we don't realize that there's a process, that sometimes the process of binding up the wound, sometimes being taken, like the, the fellow who fell among thieves, being taken to a safe place where they know how to minister healing is important to my growth and development. And I'm asking the Lord to take CMC to a place, a safe place to be healed, Amen. where the relationships can be healed, where the things that we don't understand, God can work on them and bring us into a place of being healed. Hosea 6 and verse 1, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will, not maybe, he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. Lord, bring us into those processes so that both processes happen and my brokenness has been bound up and set so I can heal. I'd like to do a comparison between Isaiah 61 and 1 and Luke 4.18. And the reason I want to do this is there's some things in one that don't seem to be in the other. In fact, Jesus, quoting from Isaiah 61, seemed to forget some things and add some things. And of course, I was brought up in a legalistic church, so I had to find out why. Why didn't he quote it right? Hello? Why didn't he quote it right? He did quote it right, but he quoted the spirit of the word, not just the letter. And sometimes we get so caught up with the letter, we miss the spirit of the thing. And so in Isaiah 61, 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. There that is again. To proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are what? What? Opening of the prison to them that are bound? How I many realize there's more in that than we've seen? Luke 4.18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Well, he quoted that one wrong. In the Old Testament, he said meek. In the New Testament, he said poor. Why? Because blessed are the poor in Spirit. But wait a minute, aren't they, aren't, aren't they already saved? How many know there's more to the gospel than just initial, initial salvation? 
The gospel includes wholeness, not just healing. And our cry is, God, I want to be made whole. Jesus asked the question, would thou be made whole? He's asking us that question as a body of people. Do we want to be made whole? My answer is yes. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. In the Old Testament, he bound them up. In the New Testament, he healed what he bound up. Both processes. To preach deliverance to the captives. Well, we won't go there right now. But there's a whole dimension there. Folks, some of us need deliverance from ourselves. Well, I won't go down there either. (laughs) Now, he said this one, and it wasn't at all referred to in Isaiah 61. He said, the recovering of the sight to them that are blind. Lord, we would see. We would see not just the natural, but into the realm of the spirit. We want to be able to see what you're doing and align ourselves with that. It's time for alignment, folks. And it's alignment with the purpose of God. Not my vision for the house, not your vision for the house, but Lord, give us your vision for the house. Because when you give us your vision, you're going to fulfill it. He that hath begun a good work in you is not just able, well able. How many know there's a difference between able and well able? And it's not Cain. All right. I know. You're going to have to get used to it, dear. He's well able. He's well able to perform that which he laid on the heart of the founders of this place many years ago. He's going to see the travail of his soul. Do you know he's been travailing over CMC? He has kept it from a number of messes. Why? There's a purpose. There's a destiny upon this property, upon this land, and upon this people. And then, I like this last one, although it's, again, it's not in the old either. To set at liberty them that are bruised. How many have had a bruise? You've fallen and it looks okay and a couple of days later what happens? The bruise shows itself. You don't always know the bruise until it shows. Some of us have gone through this and we think we're okay, but there may be a bruise that shows up later. Don't hide it. Don't ignore it. Let him liberate you. Your bruises keep you bound. Hello. Some of us, you know, I've done counseling for quite a few years, and sometimes you get those that are stuck. No matter what you tell them, they're stuck. Well, first of all, I found a scripture that disturbed me. Anybody ever find some of those? Do you know what it says? It says I can be wounded in my spirit. A wounded spirit who can bear it. And one day the Lord, I'm counseling someone, and the Lord said they can't stand themselves. They're wounded in their spirit. They cannot bear themselves. And so I begin to pray, Lord, I have no idea what can wound a spirit. Because I thought, you know, I might as well get this theology out there. I was taught that when you come to Jesus, your spirit is totally free, clear, redeemed, and only your soul and body need dealing with. And then I read that nasty scripture. In 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, cleanse yourself, written the Charismatic Christians, 
apostolic folks, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Then I had to ask God, what can contaminate my spirit? I asked the question and he told me that was my first problem. Because when he tells you, then you've got to face, are any of those in me? And so, but, but the thing is, I need to be liberated from those bruises. I often say I'm here in spite of the body of Christ. I am. But do you know something that's kept me here? It's been going to him when he showed me these bruises that, liber- that I was bound by. And saying, heal me. from the in- By the way, bruises are healed from the inside out. Hello? Sometimes for a while you may be the only one that knows you got it but they heal from the inside out. And he wants me not to be bound by my bruisings in the past, by my woundings in the past. He wants me to free him. I've been through several betrayals. And God said, forgive. Forgive. Why? Because forgiveness deletes bitterness. And bitterness corrupts every relationship. Number one, I want a good relationship with you guys. Not just because I'm the overseer of the ministry. I want a good relationship because I'm your friend, I hope. I want to become friend and family. But that's relational. Position is one thing. But folks, I want to be part of the family. And God wants to develop a family so that when he brings new folks in, they are overwhelmed with love. Because love, folks, love is the hallmark of whether we're Christians or not. By this shall all men know that you, my disciples, that you put up with one another. That you tolerate one another. (laughs) No, that you love one another and people feel that love. That's extremely important, folks. That we, I, I, I love what's going on here. I love what God's doing. But we need to be healed so we can love better. So we can flow easier. So there's nothing in my spirit that rattles you. You know, If I had a bruise or a scab here and a scab here, what would happen if I went like this? Scab would come off and I'd start to bleed again. I'd start to lose life. Because the life is where? Oh, you mean if my scab scrapes your scab, we can both lose life? God said, I want to liberate them that are bruised. God said, I don't want any hard spots in your nature. That's what scab is. And you know, he provided everything we need for it to be healed, for us to be whole. By his stripes, we are healed. So I just, by the way, you're seeing a miracle this morning, a short message. I just want to pray that God will begin the healing process in the house. That God would, by his anointing and by his spirit, by that great gentleness that he has, come to each one of us and show us where we might have those things and heal them. That this body might become whole. Jesus, We believe you've called us to be whole. And some of us have had our wounds so long we don't even know they're there. We've become survivors with those wounds. And some of them may have been scraped in the last few months. 
pour out the oil. Pour in the oil and the wine. Bind up those wounds. Take us as a body to a safe place in the spirit where we can have time to heal. Presence of Jesus. Presence of Jesus. We want to cultivate your presence so that healing is just in the house. Let your healing flow. Let your healing flow. Let the anointing that destroys the yoke come and liberate your people from their bruises, from their brokenness. And Father, destroy everything that we need deliverance from in our lives. Let your presence come and flow, we pray, in your precious name. Amen. Thank you.